that kind of takes us to the next level of uh, uh, the next uh, part, um, and that is remote access. Uh, tell us a little bit about the tools that uh, are available to, to accomplish this, this part of remote production. It's kind of the third, the third pillar, if you like. We, you've got that sort of bringing the feeds back. You've got that remote control. And then there's this idea of remote access or like uh, remotely moving content. Um, and it's, it, I'd say it's less about real-time video. You know, the, the, the other two are quite linked to real-time video flows, whereas this is much more about file-based where you kind of, and it's much more popular, like it's been done in the US for many, many years. Um, like CBS moves something like 50,000 files a weekend from trucks back to their broadcast center. Um, and it's more around like a lot of content gets recorded on EBS servers, you know, like uh, at events. That content is clipped by operators and then it's exported as an MXF or, you know, some uh, a QuickTime movie, something like that. It's exported um, and it gets pushed back to the broadcast center in real time. So that workflow includes some sort of um, file transfer accelerator, be it Spira or Signin or Filecat, something like that. Um, and it enables those MXF files. As soon as they're clipped on the EVS, they're backed up and MXF is made and they're transferred back. And generally, depending on the speed of the, the bandwidth of the, the pipe that's available, depending on the bit rate of the file, you know, those choices, it's back and, vis and, and available in the asset management system in the, um, in the broadcast center in a minute, you know, like really genuinely very quickly. You don't have to wait very long. Um, what it enables is you might be bringing back a real time feed of like the program clean, program dirty, and an ISO, you know, ISO of camera one or all 22 mm -hmm. or something like that. But you then start to bring back alongside those things, you bring back the, the smaller subclips that generally in, in the past you would have had to have waited to be put on a disc wait for someone to get in the car or on a plane with that disc and fly back to the broadcast center and plug the disc in. And, and obviously when you start to look at these file transfer workflows, they're available instantly, you know, really as soon as an event happens, you wait a couple of minutes. The nice thing is, is that it travels with all the metadata. Um, it means that you can bring, if you're logging in your broadcast center or you're sort of you know, adding metadata in some way in the broadcast center, everything ties up because you just kind of use IDs like game IDs or match IDs to say, this content relates to this and everything just kind of syncs together. And it's it's mainly for sort of post-production and archive workflows, but the, the speed is actually quite surprising how quickly you can get stuff back from, from your, your event to your broadcast center. And it's such a widely used model now that in terms of remote production, we often overlook it because everyone does it really. And, you know, it's, it's, it's such a simple one to do. Right. The ability to, to immediately begin editing on a growing file um, in, a, in a facility or in a truck has, has been there for quite a while. And now with that ability to to have the same types of things either on-prem or, or elsewhere is, is really, really helpful. 